tips for things to do, places to eat, and where to stay in Carlsbad, California, my hometown, coming up. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Christine with Where in the World of Seattle, and I make travel videos every week to help you get up, get out, and go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. I'm taking my mom out on a day of adventures. Say hi, mom. <laughs> we'll be bringing you along with all of our adventures today, but we'll also be sharing some tips on other things you can do in the area. And actually, Mom, how long have you been living in Carlsbad? I've been here over 30 years. <laughs> One of the amazing things about Carlsbad is it's a great time to visit all year round. It is always beautiful here. I would say that generally it's 50s at night, 70s during the day. But according to WeatherSpark, the best time to visit is June to October. It's April of 2021, and we happen to get a really beautiful day today. And so we are starting our day kayaking. Actually, no we're not. We're starting our day here at Toast for some breakfast. So let's dig in and then let's get on the boat. Woo. Hello from Carlsbad Lagoon. My mom and I are on a double kayak. We went out with California Water Sports. Where's your wave, mom? And they have a lot of things <laughs> that you can rent from stand-up paddles to these bike thingies that seem like a lot of work for not a lot of reward but they also have like pontoons and other things but we decided on the double kayak and we've been kayaking around the lagoon and actually pro tip I ended up looking on Groupon and I found a Groupon and got a very discounted rate on this two-hour kayak and so we've just been cruising around the lagoon What's your honest opinion about kayaking here, Mom? It's nice, but not really very much to see. It is a circle, so if you wanted to do the whole two hours, it'd be a circle about three times. <laughs> the honest opinion, I agree. There's not a whole lot to see, but it is like, it's really beautiful to be out on the water and out on the lagoon. But I also think I'm spoiled because I do a lot of kayaking in Florida where it's really phenomenal. Videos in the description below if you wanna see that. But we have a beautiful day out here and it is really nice to spend time out here. nice to be out on the water but there are a couple other things I also recommend in the area and one of them is definitely going to the beach and I would say there are two options on how you can play this out going to the beach that's closer to Carlsbad village that's on the northern side there's a really great walking path over there and it's just a really great spot to walk either on the beach or on the walking path the other thing I recommend is going to South Ponto Beach so on the southern side of Carlsbad Ponto Beach is a really beautiful spot and there are a couple jetties over there and it's just one of my favorite places to catch a sunset. Obviously hang out at the beach also, but just a really great place to catch the sunset. And one other really beautiful place is Batakitos Lagoon. And I'll drop a link in the description below on where I love to park my car, but there's a really great walking path there. And if you walk to the end of the path and back, it takes around 45 minutes, but it's really pretty because in the lagoon, you'll see tons of fish jumping, you'll see birds, ducks, cranes, and it's just a really beautiful spot to go for a walk. And speaking of beautiful, this next one I recommend, oh, you gotta be here at the right time for it. If you happen to be in Carlsbad in the springtime, you cannot miss coming to the Carlsbad flower fields. March and April are the months to be here. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm here in the month of April, 2021, and that's when the flowers are most in bloom. And I have a Southern California friend that's gonna give us another tip about when to come. I'm Janine, I am the Wild Explorer. I'm a travel content creator based in LA. And if you wanna know all things California, I'm your girl. For someone who's visiting the Carls by Flower Fields, what's your one pro tip? Um, if you can, go on a weekday, go as early as you can because all the families come like after 11 and it's a oh, whole show. Early. So I was actually considering the afternoon, but now I'll consider going probably the first ticket in the morning. Yeah. How long did you spend there? Two hours. Oh, two hours. Get her done in two hours. <laughs> So based on Janine's advice, I bought the first ticket of the day on a Friday. And so I'm here at 9 a.m. Tickets are $20 to get in. And there's so many options for things to do in the flower fields, whether you decide to go blueberry picking or go on one of the wagon tours or do what everyone is here to do, which is take photos. And I have a San Diego friend that's gonna give us a pro tip about how to take photos here. I'm here with JJ. JJ, introduce yourself. What's up, everybody? My name is JJ from Jaycation. I do world travel turned into San Diego because San Diego is my hometown and 
and everybody wanted to start watching Jaycation at home. What's your pro tip for the flower fields? Oh, you definitely got to use the cutouts. The cutouts over there, it's a T-shape, right? And make sure you're, you're with a friend or be nice to somebody and have them angle your camera a little lower on the other side of the cutout so it looks like you're within the flower fields, but you're really not. You're kind of in a mm. tarp, like a green tarp, and do your poses and you'll get your perfect Instagram shot. Perfect, I'm gonna do that with my mom. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. A few more ideas of other things to do right in this area, and these are good ones, especially if you have kids with you or if you're just a big kid like me. One of them is going to Legoland. Legoland is just around the corner from here, and my nephew used to have an annual pass, so I used to go with him all the time, but it is a really fun place both for kids and adults. Another really fun one is K1 Racing. It's such a fun place to race go-karts, and I have gotten motion sickness there before, but it is so much fun. And here's one more idea for something to do that's actually just across the street from here and it's something that my mom does more than I do. Do you know what that is? Oh, shoppy. <laughs> I'm at the Carlsbad Premium Outlets, which are really awesome because there's such a huge selection of stores and not just regular outlet stores, but tons of premium stores. And <laughs> if there's something you know about me, you know that I don't really shop that often. I wear a lot of the same clothes, but I came here and I picked up a backpack from the Adidas store for my upcoming Mexico trip because I plan on riding a bike a lot with my drone in my backpack. But the Carlsbad Premium Outlets is a really great place just across the street from the flower fields to stop in, do some shopping. But the thing that I love the most is what else is across the street from here. One of my favorite places to come to in the area is the windmill and it's a food hall with so many options. I've been here more times than I can count. It's a great place to come to as a group, but they also have really great entertainment. I've been here before when they've had a drag queen performing and it was so fun to play bingo, have drinks at the bar. And my favorite thing to eat here is the chicken. Cross Street chicken is so delicious and funny story, one time when I came here, Meatball tried to order 50 pieces of chicken for five people. It was just way too much chicken. I think, I think we ate 37 pieces, but it is perfectly cooked and it's not small. Let's talk about JJ's favorite. What's your favorite spot to eat at? Ooh, yeah, the Windmill Food Hall is awesome. I love that place. Um, I would say District 1 Pho is good. You gotta try their pho and their shaken beef. That's shaken beef? Shaken beef, wow. yeah. Super good. Do you eat the pho and the shaken beef in a single sitting? That I, can, I can't do it. That I have a, I have a, I have a small stomach and really weak, so I just had the pho and then I ate the shaken beef and took it home. I like having the rare steak, just all rare steak, pho thai. and then cooking it in the broth. So today I took his suggestion. I had the rare beef pho. It was really delicious. I'm really full right now. Can't miss craft pizza. They really do make delicious pizza. But again, tip: come here with a group of people so you can try everything. And their bar's not bad either. Actually, let's be real. You want to know what my favorite thing is? It's this thing right here, the bar. The bar has really good selection, both in terms of cocktails and beers and, of course, wine. But I love drinking at the bar here. And speaking of drinking, another really great spot that has so many great places to not only go to bars and drink, but really great restaurants is Carlsbad Village. And my mama is going to tell you where we're going today. Where are we headed? Haru Mama. Let's do it. And I chose this spot because Janine that you met earlier inspired me with some of her California reels because she came here and oh, so cute. I'm so excited our food's about to come out. We ordered the duck ramen. And since we also ordered buns, we're gonna split this. Okay, I'm prepared for cute overload. Reveal it, mom. Oh my gosh, how cute. Next. Oh my gosh, the cow. Which one is cuter? <laughs> Really cute. Let's bite it directly in the face. <laughs> really, really, really delicious. I might have to order my own after this. There are kind of a limitless number of restaurants in this area that are really phenomenal. A couple that I really love, Campfire is a really delicious restaurant and they literally cook everything over a campfire. And another really casual one that I love, especially for outdoor seating, is Crackheads. They have a really great selection of drinks and it's a really great spot to just hang out outside. Let's ask JJ what his favorite is. I would say Borden Brew is one of the classics over there. You can gra grab any of their sandwiches and they're amazing. And just across the street, there's a place called Park 101. You can get brews, burgers, fries, and 
you can actually go upstairs and it's Ooh. outdoors and it overlooks the Carlsbad sign on the street. Pro tip, I'm definitely headed there. Yeah. Thank you. Great place for a sunset too, so. A couple other options that are right here in the area. Of course, you gotta eat it in and out. If you're from California, you know what that's all about. But if you're not, then my pro tip for going to in and out is to order your fries well. And what that means is they will cook the fries just a little bit longer because In-N-Out fries are kind of known for being a little limp and soggy, but consider going to In-N-Out and ordering your fries well. Another option in the area is Carl Strauss. It's a brewery and there's actually a lot of craft breweries in the area. So make sure you check the link in the description below for more info on that. But Carl Strauss, really great brewery that's right over the flower fields and it's a great spot to pick up some beers and have some really delicious lunch. And actually, speaking of Carl Strauss, it is located right next door to the Kassara, which is one of my favorite places to stay at in the area. So let's talk about that. Located above the Carlsbad flower fields, you've got to book the Kassara when the ranunculas are in bloom. And again, that's that March and April timeframe, unless you want that beautiful balcony and you love the color brown. <laughs> I made that mistake. But I love staying on this property and I have a full video, link in the description below, of what my experience was like with the full room tour, so make sure you check that out. And speaking of the description below, I've also linked a bunch of my other San Diego videos. And if you're enjoying this video, make sure you choose that like button and consider subscribing. And if you have tips for Carlsbad, add them in the comments below. I am working hard for you. You can see that I'm in a different place in a different outfit on a different day, but I can't cover everything. So if you have helpful tips, add them below so that I can use them when I'm back home. Okay, back to the Kassara. One of the things I loved about this property is the beautiful lobby and they also have an amazing pool. One thing that's kind of confusing is it's sharing a lot of the same areas as the Grand Palisades, so that's just one thing to look out for. And one thing I'm always curious about is the prices. And I have a pro tip for you that I want to share in case it helps you to find the right hotel for you because for me, price and quality are two super important things. And here's a quick tip. Just open up Google and make sure you have the map over the area you're looking for. And then I'm just typing in the word hotel and then I'm using the filters to make sure it's a highly reviewed place and within a price point that I'm looking for. And that's helping me to determine what my options are in an area and find places that I may not have known about. So that's how I'm able to see, for example, the Kassara right now, and I'm just choosing a random date for you. I'm filming this on May 1st, and so I'm looking at a date that's near here, and the price right now is a whopping $138, which in my opinion is a total steal. So that doesn't mean that that's the price that you will pay, but I wanna use these same dates to give you a side by side comparison of the good, better, 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 best of the other hotels I'm gonna tell you about in the area. So let's jump to the next one, which is the La Costa Resort and Spa. It's been there for a long time. It's now an Omni Hotel, and that rate going for those same dates right now is $306. Two things I love about this property. I love their tennis and pickleball courts, and I also love their pools. So beautiful, and they have both an adult area for pools and a kid's area for pools. This next resort I've stayed at several times and I love it and it's the Park Hyatt. The rate right now is $595 for those same dates again and one of the things if you don't wanna pay that premium price but you want to enjoy the property is go to their restaurants. I loved eating at Argyle, their steakhouse which has since closed but I've heard phenomenal things about their new restaurant that's opened in its place, Ember and Rye. And whoo, this next property I'm so curious about. It's this new hotel that has has just opened right above Ponto Beach. And it's pretty expensive right now. Again, just recently opened, but it's going for $629 and it looks like a really beautiful property and is in a very amazing spot right on the beach. And if you're feeling like all of these places are pretty expensive, again, use that tip around the hotels and Google Maps and then slide that price filter to where it fits for you. And also, pro tips, link in the description below about how I use TripAdvisor, another way to find really well rated and recommended hotels by other travelers, but within the price point that I'm looking for. So check out that video below. And also speaking about going below, head south to La Jolla. Oh, I loved that day of adventures with my mom. Link in the description below. I'm Christine. I'm here every week with new adventures. Cheers that like button if you haven't already. And I'm here every week with new adventures. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.